and I'm rambling a little bit, but that's just because I have ca so much caffeine in my body <laughs> right now. Um. Hey everybody, uh, it is Kobe, I am back. I'm sorry about no video last week. I was gonna be a conspiracy video and I had it researched and I have it all written out. Um, but I got sick last week and I'm still a little bit sniffly. So I get, so if you hear me snuffling in this video, sorry about it. Uh, I was a little bit sick, but I didn't want to miss two weeks in a row. So I'm here, it's like 3 a.m. Which is prime time for me because I work the night shift anyway. Um, uh, and I'm ready to talk to you about another dinosaur. Now, I've done two videos on this already, but today's video uh, is a fun one. It's one a lot of people know about. Uh, and that is the dinosaur Triceratops. It's a, it's a classic, like, five, like, first, like, five dinosaurs anyone would list. Triceratops is probably in those. And not only that, it is also, uh, the favorite dinosaur of one of my very good friends. So this video is dedicated uh, to Salem because that's just, just just a little nice, just a little nice thing for you. Now, Triceratops, the name means three-horned face. It got this name in 1889 from Othniel Charles March, which is just a fantastic name, first of all. Um, the first confirmed fossil from a Triceratops was found in 1887, which was two years before that. Um, and that was found in Colorado by George Lyman Cannon, um, who then gave this spe specimen to March, who was researching and this and uh, specifying the species. I he was the guy that was like, yeah, everybody, this is a this is a thing and it's real, and I named it Triceratops, uh, and that's just kind of how that all went down. It's it, the 1880s; they were wild and back in the day. Um, but Triceratops lived in the late Cretaceous period, which is the third and final part in the Mesozoic era. They lived specifically in North America, uh, in the same places you'd find Tyrannosaurus rex and Edmentosaurus. Montana, Colorado, Wyoming, the Dakotas, all that stuff up there. Basically just the American West along the shores of what was once a massive inland sea that split the continent into separate islands, Appalachia and Laramidia. Uh, Ceratopsidae, which I think I pronounced right. Um, which is, is the fan family of animal that Triceratops are in, did exist over most of the globe, and I'll talk about as many as possible. Uh, one of my favorite dinosaurs is actually uh, a different Ceratopsian uh, from China, so we'll get to that at some point. Um, but today we're talking about Triceratops, and they lived exclusively in North America in that same kind of region. Um, as the name would suggest, Triceratops had three horns on its face, two on the brows and one on the nose. As someone who enjoys a good facial accessory, I couldn't really get behind this. I love dinosaurs that just have like extra weird things. Um, you're going to find that I get very excited about some dinosaurs with like extra things like Triceratops, Guan Long, Spinosaurus. Um, and I forget the name, but you'll see, you'll see. I'll do a video on all of them. Um, along with the three horns, it had large frill covering the back and, like, shoulders and the neck. Um, da -da -da -da. and that frill was mostly made up of, like, two plates on the side and one plate in the center, um, that were all kind of fused together and were very bony, um, which would grow all along its life. The little baby ones had the little tiny things, and then as they grew, it became bigger, as did the horns. Uh, da, 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 da. And if the horns weren't enough to make Triceratops terrifying, because they could just stab you with those, they're very large, the size of the entire animal would just make you scared of them also if they were still alive. Triceratops was massive. It was 8 to 9 meters, or 30 feet in length, weighing somewhere between 5 and 9 metric tons which is as big as, or even bigger, than an elephant. Uh, some preserved skin has been found, and so from that we know at least part of the Triceratops, if not all of it, was covered in scaly skin. Obviously we don't know the coloring or the exact details, since fossilized skin doesn't retain pigments, uh, but it's suspected that the Triceratops was very colorful, based on the similarity of keratin it has to modern birds on its face, 
over its nostrils, it had this layer of keratin. And when modern birds have that same feature, that's always really, really colorful. And so we can kind of guess like, maybe this was the same thing, or maybe they were just really boring colors and they're not interesting at all. Uh, who's to say? Uh, I would like to believe that uh, they were very colorful because that just sounds fun. It's just a little fun to think whimsically. Um, as for their diet, triceratops were herbivores, though rather than eating the leaves from the top of the trees like sauropods would do, uh, their heads were very low hung on their necks and postures, so they probably filled their bellies by eating underbrush and shrubbery, uh, though it is possible that they could push over taller trees with how just like massive and bulky they were. Um, and their teeth were huge, just like the rest of them. Uh, they were arranged in what we now call batteries, and these batteries were basically just columns of teeth cycling through the way a shark's teeth would cycle. Like, if it falls out, one of them just comes down forever. Um, again, something that we humans do not have. <laughs> we we got two sets, and then we got to make some fake ones if we lose that second set. Um, but in their lifetime, a triceratops could have gone through up to 800 teeth, depending on how long it lived and different factors of like what it was eating, how like if it lost its teeth and stuff and like that. Um, while it is a common theory that triceratops live in herds, the only proof we have of that is that we've found groups of fossils together. But it's not certain whether that's because they lived and died together, or if their bones got deposited together in some other way after their death. Like if they had died along a river and then it got swept into a bone bed, which quite a few uh, fossils are found in bone beds like that, all jumbled together and not in the positions that they died in. Uh, so it's very hard to tell like kind of what they lived in. Other evidence we have that they at least interacted with each other uh, is that we have found triceratops with like injured frills and things uh, from injuries that look to be caused by other triceratops horns, uh, which would either mean basically that they're fighting amongst themselves for a variety of reasons. Unlike the Tyrannosaurus, uh, they're herbivores, so it wasn't cannibalism. Most likely a sign of like territorialism or fighting over mates or something along those lines. Behavior is the hardest thing to pinpoint from bones alone, uh, and the scant trace fossils that we, you know, can find um, just of these creatures. Um, for all we know, they were just fighting for fun uh, and got a little out of hand and just stabbed each other with their <laughs> with their horns. You know, you know how that is when you accidentally stab your buddy with with your horns. Um, we do know that Triceratops laid eggs because we have found fossilized nests, um, so we know that about them. Um, like I said, we know their diet from their teeth, uh, we know vaguely what they look like based on their bones, uh, and the few skin fossils we found, but other than that, uh, all fossils are just very, very hard to kind of categorize, which is one of the reasons I really, really like learning about them, because every single thing you learn could be something that's completely new. And I'm rambling a little bit, but that's just because I have so much caffeine in my body <laughs> right now. Um, but yeah, that is um, the Triceratops. It's, it's, a, it's a very, like, it's a top, like, if I had to do a tier list of the dinosaurs, which I might do in the future, I just had that idea, and it sounds a lot of fun, uh, it would be, it would be pretty high up. It might not be in my top tier, but it would be at least second tier, um, and, you know, everybody's got their favorites, and this one's pretty close to being one of mine. Um, it also, Triceratops sounds kind of like one of my siblings' names, uh, because her name is Sarah, so that has always been fun throughout my life, being like, ah, oh, this dinosaur is like my sister. They're not similar any other ways, because she's a human. But yeah, that's... <laughs> um, but yeah, if you enjoyed this, go ahead and hit a like and subscribe, check out my other dinosaur videos that I've done, uh, and will be doing in the future. Um, you can hit up any of your favorite Triceratops facts that maybe I missed or got wrong in the comments, or if you have a specific dinosaur you want me to talk about, you can put that in the comments and I might move it up the list. I have a list of, like, 
70 dinosaurs that I'm working my way through, and I'm only doing two a month, so it's <laughs> it's going to take a while to get through my original list, but I will add to it, I will rearrange it, uh, if you guys comment ones that you want next. Um, other than that, we should be uh, wrapping up for the day. Next week is a cryptid, the week after that is a dinosaur, and then the conspiracy that was supposed to be last week, I'll get to that. Uh, I have it all planned out. I just wanted to keep to my schedule, so I just pushed that video back a month. Sorry about it. Uh, sickness happens, and I just had to take care of my little sickly Victorian child body for a little bit there. Yeah, thank you for coming along this uh, fun little ride with me. I love talking about dinosaurs. Um, hasta la pasta. I'll see you next time.